Hello everyone, George here, and in this video, we are going to pick up from our last custom view video where we were manipulating uh, some balls bouncing around the screen, but in a very predictable fashion. We need to extend our code a little bit to make things a little bit more interesting. What I plan on doing in the next series of two videos is, in this first video, create a vector 2D class to support what we're going to do in the following video, which is allow the user to click and drag their finger and then release and fire a uh, sphere or ball off in the direction they chose based on the magnitude of how far they decided to uh, do that as well. But most importantly, instead of just bouncing from one side to the other, it will use the vectors to then calculate its reflection angle off of that surface and then continue to bounce around all over the place. So let's get started with this first video. To do that, we're going to right click, go to new Java class, and we're going to create a class called vector 2 D. Hit OK. So this class is going to feature two public variables. It's going to be public float X and public float Y. The reason they're public is we're going to be accessing these things so often, there's really no reason to, uh, to make them protected or use some sort of getter access. Next thing we're going to do is create a couple constructors. So we're going to want to first be able to create just a, a blank vector. So let's do vector 2D. And the values for this are simply going to be x is equal to 0, 0.0 and y is equal to 0, 0.0 as well. The next one is going to be a public vector 2D. And for this one, the user is going to be allowed to supply two floats. So of course, it's going to be float x and float y. And down here, it's going to be this dot x is equal to x and this dot y is equal to y. The next one is going to let us copy the vector over. So let's do public vector 2D. And we're going to put a vector 2D inside of there. And let's just call this vector. Now it's going to be x is equal to vector dot x. And y is equal to vector dot y. Okay, now that we have that down, we need to add some functionality to make it easier to manipulate vectors. Vectors, of course, have direction and uh, magnitude. So they're great at dealing with things like acceleration and velocity and position. So the first thing we're going to want to do is add the ability to know the magnitude of the vector or how long it is. So we're going to add a public float magnitude. And that's going to return to us a float value. That's going to be, let's type to cast that to a float because we're going to use something, math dot square root, which uses doubles, and it's going to be this dot x times this dot x plus this dot y times this dot y. Of course, this is just Pythagorean's theorem. You can look up why this works, but basically we square these terms so that negatives don't matter. And then of course, we take the square root to bring it back out of this, uh, this area of the object. So this is area calculation. This is an area calculation. And then this undo undoes that area and brings it back down to uh, the line or length of that object. Let's next up public vector 2D, this is going to be normalize. So we're going to have two versions of normalizing a vector or turning it into a unit vector. A unit vector means its magnitude is one. And many times when you're doing calculations with vectors, having the magnitude equal to one uh, just simplifies the work we have to do. So for this method, we're going to get float magnitude is equal to the magnitude. We need that magnitude or how long it is to normalize the vector. And we end up dividing each of the components by that magnitude. This scales them down, makes them the unit vectors that we actually want to work with. And then for this normalize, we're going to return this. So the idea is if we want to normalize this in a chain of sequences, we can call this method and what we get back is the normalized vector, but not a copy of it. Now that we have the ability to normalize things, we should move on to the common vector operations that we all are familiar with, such as addition, subtraction, and of course, a multiplication by a scalar, and finally, the dot product. So we're gonna create our add and subtract methods in two different ways. Uh, let's do the first one, which is just going to be a method of the instance. So let's do a vector 2D add, and we're gonna take in the other vector to add to it. We're just gonna call that right-hand side. This one will manipulate the instance we're working with. So it's going to be this dot x plus equals right hand side dot x. And then it's going to be this dot y plus equals right hand side dot y. But we are going to return this vector. 
The reason is so that we can chain these things together to create more complicated manipulations and not have to have multiple lines of code to represent them. We can nest them one after the other. The next one is going to be a public static vector 2D add. And what's different about this is it's going to take two parameters, the vector 2D left hand side and the vector 2D right hand side. It's going to add these quantities together and return to us a new vector. So let's do return new vector 2D. And within that, it's going to be left hand side dot X plus the right hand side dot X. And then the left hand side dot Y plus the right hand side dot Y. We're going to do the same thing for subtraction. So wait, we might as well just copy these methods over, paste them and change their names. So subtract and subtract and the difference is simply that the plus equals now becomes a minus equals and with subtraction we just do subtraction from the left hand side and the right hand side. The next method we're going to create uh, allows us to multiply our vector by a scalar and once again it's going to be these two different methods types so a public vector 2d scalar this one will manipulate the vector we're working with right hand side and it's just going to multiply both of the terms, the x, by the uh, float that's been passed in. This dot y times equals right hand side. As before, we are going to return this, that is the vector, so we can chain these arguments together. Next up is our public static vector 2D scalar. And this one is going to take in a vector 2D, which will be, let's just call it vector, and then a float, which we'll just call scalar. This one will once again create a new vector for us and not manipulate the vector we pass in. So let's do a return new vector 2D, and in that it's going to be vector dot Y times our scalar, and then a vector dot Y times our scalar. I think I might have said Y twice, but obviously it's X and then Y. The last two methods we're going to create are the dot product and the two string method so we can print out results. So let's do a public static float dot. The dot product will take in two vectors, so 2D left hand side and vector 2D right hand side. In this case dot product order actually doesn't matter. We can do it in any order, but it's going to be left hand side dot x times the right hand side dot x plus the left hand side dot y times the right hand side dot y. And our final method is going to be our public string to string. This method is going to return to us, well you can do whatever you want to. Um, in my case we're going to simplify this, we're going to use a parenthesis and then we're going to add to this string dot value of and it's going to be this dot x and then we're going to add to that a comma and then our string dot value of and this dot y close up with parentheses. And that's it for the vector class. In the next video, we're going to be extensively using this vector 2D class inside of our bouncing ball class, as well as our custom view to record different kinds of directional information. So thanks again, everyone for watching. And remember, if you liked the video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more in this series, feel free to subscribe so you'll get constant updates on all my new videos. Have a great night, everyone. See you later. Goodbye.